Logarithmic differentiation. What a magical little subject this is going to be for you today. It's a nice easy way to simplify the derivatives of complicated functions. So we're going to uh, jump into some examples because only by example you understand what I'm actually talking about. So if we had something like this, you could probably find the derivative of this using the product and quotient rules. I have no doubt in my mind that you're quite capable of doing that. However, if we use logarithmic differentiations, you're going to find that it's really straightforward and simple. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to take the log of both sides of the equation. So first take the ln, it's going to be the natural log, ln of both sides. Okay, so what's that going to do for us? We're going to have ln y equals the ln of all of this stuff. So e to the x square root x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus 2 in brackets cubed. Okay, now the next step you're going to do is you're going to use your rules of logarithms. Okay, so we're going to use log rules. Okay, so do you remember your log rules? So things like if things are multiplied together, it becomes the ln of the sum of the two. If you're dividing, you subtract the ln of that. So we're going to split this all up. If you have exponents, remember they come to the front. So let's do all that now. We're going to, this side is still going to be ln y. And now I'm going to take the ln of e to the x and I'm going to add the ln of and I'm going to write this without the radical sign so I'm going to write to the half power and I'm going to subtract the ln of x squared plus 2 and instead of putting the 3 up here I'm going to put it right over here now so you remember that if you have an exponent, the exponent comes to the front. So I'm going to put the 3 here. So all in one step. So now we're ready to take the derivative. Maybe one more step that you might even see you can do before you start that. This And that is that the ln of e to the x. What is the ln of e to the x? So that says, what do I raise e to to get e to the x? And the answer is just x. So you can replace that, and let's do that first. So we're going to just call this x. Now you could, if you wanted to take the derivative, you'd say 1 over x, 1 over e to the x times e to the x, because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and that gives you e to the x over e to the x, which is 1, x, right? So <laughs> now we got that all straightened up. Okay, so this is x. And if we have this, we're just going to write this out here. We're not doing anything to it yet. The next line, we will take the derivative. Oh, I should have moved this to the front. So there's a half there. Make sure all your exponents are brought forward. And there was a reason why we needed to write that out a second time, wasn't there? Okay, so now I'm all set. I used my log rules. Um, if you need to go back to the lesson on log rules, you might want to... Um, Go back and check that. Okay, now we're all set to take the derivative. So, if I take the derivative of the ln of y, so that's going to be the derivative of one of ln y is one over y y prime. Right? This is implicit differentiation now. So we're taking the derivative of y with respect to x. The derivative of x, of course, is one, and this one's going to be a half. And now when I take the derivative of ln of something, it's 1 over that. So I'll put that in brackets, times the derivative of the function. So that's going to be 2x. And this one is going to be minus 3, 1 over this, x squared plus 2, whoops, times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Okay, so now I have to simplify. So I have... 1 over y, y prime equals 1. Um, this 2 will divide into this 2. That leaves me with an x in the numerator over x squared plus 1. 
and here now I have minus 3 times 2x, so that's going to be minus 6x all over x squared plus 2. And finally, I just want y prime. So if I divide by 1 over y, that's like multiplying by y, right? Multiply by y here, multiply by y on this side. So remember, what is y? y is this green equation up here. So I'm just going to rewrite that in front and put everything else in brackets, and I'm done. Wasn't that just a piece of cake? Okay, so we have that, and we have this in the denominator, and it's times all of this work that I just did. Now look how simple that was. I remember learning this the first time, and I went, whoa, this is like magic. You could do it all the time after that. Okay, so there's your equation. There's a first example for you. We're going to do a couple of more just to make sure that you've got it all figured out. Okay, so let's go to a second example. I didn't know how long that was going to take, so I haven't written it out, but it will just take one second. So this time I have y equals, and I'm going to have the cube root of x times the cos of x all over x squared minus 1. Okay, so this one is a little different in that in this case we can have um, a negative answer and we can't take the ln of a negative number but what we can do is take the absolute value of it because um, because is the cube root of course the cube root of a negative number is a negative number so I can't take the ln of a negative y um, not a negative y but a negative value so we can't have ln uh, y can't be negative, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. So we're just going to take the absolute value. And I'll show you why that is so. So now I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to put the one-third. Remember, this was all to the one-third power. So I'm going to bring one-third out front. And then I'm going to take the lawn. I don't think you should have taken the lawn there. So we have the lawn of the absolute value of y is one-third. I should have put that down a little farther, sorry. And now I've got multiplication on the top. So that means the lawn of x plus the lawn of cos x minus the lawn of x squared minus 1. Okay, so we don't have any exponents that we need to move around. But because I'm using the absolute value, I need to have absolute value signs everywhere I have an x or some other x values. Okay, so there's all my absolute values. And now I can just go ahead and take the derivative. So the derivative of ln y, let me get my pencil out here. So ln of y, remember, is 1 over y, y prime equals... I leave my one-third out front, and I take the derivative of the ln of x, that's 1 over x, and it's the same for the absolute value of x, because even if x is negative, watch if I wrote something like, um, what's the derivative of the ln of negative x, <clears throat> you'd say, okay, that's 1 over negative x times negative 1, which is 1 over x. Okay, so that proves that the derivative of the ln of negative x is the same as the ln of x. Okay, back to this one. So I did ln x is 1 over x. The ln of cos x is going to be 1 over cos x. And the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. You have to remember all these little rules, don't you? And the ln of this one is going to be minus 1 over this. So x squared minus 1 times the derivative of x squared minus 1, which is 2x. Okay, so I'm going to just leave this minus or 1 over y, y prime, and I'm going to straighten this up a little bit. So I have 1 over x. And negative sine x over cos x is the negative of tan x, right? It's an identity. <coughs> 
And this I just have a 2x over x squared minus 1. And finally, don't leave this lowly 1 over y here. We want just y prime. So that means I'm going to multiply by y, which again is this function here. So I have cube root of x cos x divided by x squared minus 1. And then I just have to write out everything I had here before. So 1 third, 1 over x minus tan x minus 2x over x squared minus 1. Okay, so that was pretty easy. And the last one, maybe you just want to try it on your own before, um, before I take it up. I'll write it out for you. <clears throat> and it's going to be y is equal to x to the power of sine x where x is greater than 0. Okay, so another good example where you have um, x raised to a power that has another x in it. And we're going to do the very same we did before, and that is to take the ln of both sides. So I'm going to say ln y equals ln of x to the sine x. Now you don't need to write out all these steps, but I think it's good for at least the first 10 or 20 that you do so you understand the process. So now I'm going to use my laws of logarithms and I'm going to bring this sine x out front. So ln y is equal to sine x ln x. Now be careful here because you still have product rule, right? We have sine x times ln x. So now I'm going to take the derivative. So I'm going to say 1 over y, y prime equals. So the first is sine x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. First times the derivative of the second plus the second ln of x times the derivative of sine x. Derivative of sine x is cos x. And in the next step I'm going to do um, I'm just going to move the multiply by y on both sides, where y is x to the sine x. Make a bracket, and I have, I'm just going to straighten this up a little bit. So I have sine x over x plus cos x ln x. I was going to write sine. And that's as easy as it can be. So there you are, my friends. There's your logarithmic differentiation. A nice, easy lesson. And I mean, it makes life so much easier. You can use log diff, as you call it, when you get uh, to be really cool. And you can win friends and influence people by your great knowledge of logarithmic differentiation. If you, this is, this brings to the end everything that is in the Nelson Calculus and Vectors textbook. If you would like me to um, continue doing some integrations and more calculus at a little bit higher level, just leave me a note. And um, if I get enough people interested, I will do more calculus. If not, I might go back and maybe do some grade 10 material for uh, some of the other high school students. So hope you're all doing well. Have a great day. Bye for now.